Welcome back to Yev's Builds. Today's video is going to be a little bit different from what you're used to if you're a returning viewer. If you're not, I recommend you stick around because we have a whole bunch of M content, really. There's my daily E46 M3 that I've done a ton of work on. There's my E39 M5 that I'm planning to do a ton of work on. Done a little bit, not a whole lot, but it's still in the process. And here's the V10 M3 that I'm currently still building, which is the main focus of this channel. Without saying a whole lot, my brother just picked up a new car and we are here to rebuild it. Ain't that right, Dennis? Where you at? Yeah. Yes, sir. So again, if you're a viewer of this channel and you're returning, you're most likely gonna really enjoy this content and this car. Without further ado, let's get on with it and introduce the new vehicle. Here it is, the big reveal. The vehicle that Dennis picked up is a 2018 M2. It's nice as 18,000 miles, dude, it, smell, it still smells fresh. It still smells like it's from the dealer. By now, by the time you're viewing this, uh, you've seen probably the new M2, the 2023, and that looks absolutely hideous. So in my opinion, this is the last true M2 ever made. You know, this is this is what you wanna get if you're gonna get an M2. Maybe not in this condition, but it's, it's good. So the body on this thing is relatively very nice. Everywhere around is pretty sweet. There's a few spots that we did not see in the pictures on auction. For example, this roof has a slight dent in it, unfortunately. So that's another piece we're gonna have to repaint and pop out and whatnot. Um, this door is completely stuck. It doesn't open because of this fender damage, of course. So this was railed in. Look, on pictures and videos, this looks a lot worse than it really is. But with all reality, we took off the beauty cover. Um, it's not all too bad. Like this banana piece, part of the frame, right? It's, it's bent but not a whole lot if you compare it to the other side the other side it's it's not all that bad honestly it's not too bad so obviously the reinforcement bar is completely smushed the bumper is gone fender is gone hood is gone there wasn't a little oil leak when we just picked this up so we didn't even want to start the vehicle also it wouldn't start because if you don't know these newer bmws they have the safety feature where if it gets into an accident or an airbag blows where it just cuts off the car and it goes into the safety limp mode thing so for us to even put it into neutral this was a complete mission Although the body is completely fresh. We just washed this thing because working on a dirty car is never fun. The few things that we haven't seen also is this wheel is curved a little bit. There's a little bit of damage in the wheel, not too bad. The driver's side rear wheel as well has some curbs on it, some, some curb rashes on there. Again, not too terrible. Also, this piece right here we did not see in photo, so the quarter panel is a little bit damaged. Not too bad. They'll pull this out, bondo a little bit, and this should be a relatively easy fix. We're not gonna be replacing the entire quarter because of that. Obviously, the steering wheel airbag is blown. It's in the back. The footwell airbag also blew. That curtain airbag, you can't see now because whoever put this back in, uh, put it back in, but the curtain airbag also blew. The driver's seatbelt is stuck, obviously, so the person was buckled up. This spec is real nice. It's got that Alcantara on the side. It got the blue station to match the calipers. It's got a Harman Kardon sound system in here, so you know this, this is about to be bumping, ain't that right? <laughs> yes, sir. So when we were offloading this off the trailer, we couldn't put it into neutral. The car wouldn't go anywhere past accessory mode. So at least that works. There's a ton of lights and warnings on the side, uh, on, on, on the screen. And if you're telling me to look into the trunk to find that safety terminal on the battery, we've already looked. Um, everything looks intact. Again, maybe it was put back on. I'm not entirely sure, but everything s does seem intact. So before we even take it to frame, the idea here is to diagnose this and to find the oil leak, first and foremost. Hopefully the Copart guys didn't try starting this car or, or even were successful to start it because if there's an oil leak the last thing you want to do is start the engine you don't want to drain the engine of 
oil, obviously, because that can cause a lot of internal damage. So we, we're hoping, we have our fingers crossed that the engine is completely fine. Should be, since it doesn't start, right? It doesn't want to, it doesn't go anything past accessory mode. So that's, that's a good thing. The terminal, before we even give it to the frame shop, we have to find the terminal and have it at least be able to go into neutral we have to replace that terminal the idea now is to disassemble the entire front end inspect the damage a little bit better see what's going on see what we might need to replace see anything that looks a little bit off also came with all of this stuff so it's it, with with all this we can tell that the coolant reservoir is busted completely there's a few lines that go in here they're broken off as you can see some stuff are covered in oil here so we still have to find the oil leak the side skirt passenger side is smushed got to get replaced the frame rail itself on the passenger side has a little bit of a crease in there that shouldn't be too bad we'll give it to the frame shop they'll pull this right out shouldn't be an issue nothing internally here that I've seen doesn't look like there's any oil anywhere up top nor on the bottom behind the turbo there's a little bit of an oil leaking onto the turbo so I'm pretty sure it's not the turbo itself probably a line some sort of line there's a little cooler right here that's smushed or, or, or something it doesn't look too bad but it definitely needs attention this piece right here goes to the coolant reservoir so that's already self-explanatory the hood latches are busted this headlight unfortunately is also slightly busted the this one is missing completely this one just has a few tabs missing on it maybe we could restore it maybe we could repair it but it does work we did turn them on they look phenomenal for now we washed just the exterior of the car simply because i don't want to wash the engine bay quite yet because well there's a bunch of lines that are disconnected and hoses and whatnot and also i want to find the oil leak to be exactly sure where the oil leak is coming from it's barely dripping now obviously the car isn't started so we can't really do much we were able to go into the iDrive system into the oil measuring component of, of the iDrive and we couldn't measure the oil because the car was off and disconnected from the battery for so long that it, it's telling us to go and go for a drive for about 30 minutes or so before it's able to tell us how much oil we have we obviously cannot do that another unfortunate part about these newer generation BMWs there are no oil dipsticks this V10 the M5 that it came out of they don't have oil dipsticks in my setup I will have an oil dipstick however I have one ready we just have to fabricate it once everything's put and ready to go maybe gonna be the first one in the world I don't know I don't know also if you have any ideas of why this car doesn't go into neutral please comment down below we have an open mind for this okay we are trying to get as much knowledge and information as we can and if you know something we would really appreciate it without further ado let's get to disassembling this beast because I'm sure Dennis cannot wait to drive this thing little update as you can see we've taken off quite a bit of things the AC condenser which I thought was busted turned out it wasn't when I unplugged it just started spraying free on you didn't hear that from me I'm just saying radiator was obviously bent and messed up so that's out as well we're gonna get a new one this intercooler however seems fine it really does seem fine again no way to tell until we remove it and we pressure test it. My theory on why this is dirty is because this water pump actually, this fitting had a crack in it. I tugged on it a little bit and started spraying coolant a little bit harder. I tugged on it more, started spraying coolant even harder and then just broke off. So this was completely busted. But my only concern is why was the fluid brown? Usually transmission fluid is kind of brownish, reddish tint to it, right? This is definitely a water pump. I've replaced these a few times. So why is the fluid not blue? Is there oil in it? Is there a mix of oil and coolant? Is the head gasket blown? I am not sure. But on the good side, the engine does turn. So it's not seized. That's a good thing. The engine turns. That's a good thing. That's all we care about. So it is not seized. That's a good thing. But the question to why the fluid is brown and reddish and not blue or just solid brown, that still remains. So I'm underneath the car now and we're gonna drain the oil to see if it's actually still mixed with coolant or not. If it's not, that's a good sign. Maybe that was just some sort of weird hiccup thing, but uh, moment of truth, let's go baby. If there's even any oil at all, there is. Okay, and it's very clean. 
That was chunky. Thankfully, after many hours, we actually managed to get the door open. What we did is we took off these hinges right there. We unscrewed that bottom bolt, it's 13 mil, unscrewed this top bolt from the bottom hinge, and we managed to pry the front of the door outward like this off from the actual hinges. So the pins that go through these hinges, we managed to actually pry it out a little bit and move the front of the door outward but the rear of the door was still stuck. Unfortunately, this took way too long than expected and now seeing the damage and understanding why this was stuck, mainly because of this crease right here. The impact seems to be a little bit hard on this side to the point where it moved over this entire frame piece right here inward and possibly that is what caused this roof to fold in just a little bit, possibly. I'm not entirely sure yet. But as you can see, we managed to get the door open. It was very difficult because one of us had to be in here and try to get this door panel off. It was a complete doozy, but it was manageable. We managed to get the door panel off. We slid it through right over here and we took it out. That took a little bit of time, but then, we opened this up and we noticed that the locking mechanism, right? So this part that pushes down on the actual lock, it was going down enough, but not enough to actually unlatch this lock right here that attaches to this latch. Reason for that is because the door was jammed in so far in this way, it just didn't have enough of this motion right here to actually unlatch. So what we did was we went through right around here, can't even see, but we went and pried that lock in the secondary cable enough to, and we pushed it down enough to where it actually unlatched and we finally managed to open the door. This took way too long, but at least we got it open and we know that there is no damage right here. So that is actually really good news. This is exciting. This is very exciting and we are making progress. At this point, we're still unsure of where the oil leak came from because I'm assuming there's another cooler right here, an oil cooler possibly because this cooler right here is actually coolant. This side, however, why was there oil everywhere? Only on this side, I'm not entirely sure. None of the oil lines look too busted enough to where they're actually gonna leak, but you know, you never know until you realize that it's actually a minuscule crack somewhere among that and you're actually leaking oil from there. So we're still gonna be diagnosing, but at this point, we know pretty much probably 80% of what parts we need. And we're gonna start ordering those up. Another thing we've noticed is that this passenger side front wheel is actually not even original. The wheel probably is made by BMW, but it is not the original wheel that came with this car. No Notice, all the black accents are matte, right? They are matte. The rear, these you can tell are powder coated black. These are original factory spec, as well as the rest of the wheels. This one, however, not only is it matte and not gloss, but we can tell that this has been um, plasti dipped. That is definitely plasti dipped, so the entire wheel is actually silver and it is not paint matched correctly. That's unfortunate. Mm, clearly something has been up with this before, or maybe the, we don't, we don't entirely know for sure yet, but we will remove this and if Dennis decides to get them powder coated or maybe get, decides to get a different set of wheels, we, we don't know, but we're, we're gonna go with the flow. So with all of this being said and being shown, if you are interested in stuff like this, if you're interested in material like this and seeing this car progress into a working vehicle let me know because this is my first time doing something like this usually it's v10 how to's and s54 how to's and m3 and you know this is the swap and everything but this is kind of fun and this is uh, definitely a different direction than what i'm used to but if you're if you're interested let me know so prepping for the next video this is going to be a good stopping point i feel like we are going to be ordering a bunch of parts for this m2 we already know 80 percent of what we need probably very basic stuff um hopefully get it to the frame shop but the only reason we can get it to the frame shop is if we figure out how to put this car in neutral because ain't no shop is going to be putting it on on little jack wheels, you know what I mean, and moving the car around. So we're going to get it to go into neutral and start putting on parts, start replacing parts, taking it to the frame shop, getting all that stuff lined up, and that should be good. So uh, appreciate you. Peace.